So we're going to create a 3D text geometry with some rectangles and some lights and some cameras and things like that. So, uh, so first what we're going to do is we are going to delete everything on the text designer window, um, all our operators. And I'm going to create a project folder for this. And I'm just going to happen to put this in my week 11 class. And you can put this anywhere on your hard drive where you know where it's going to be. And I'm going to name this YouTube Tut for our tutorial. And create it. And basically, this is giving you, again, all the files and different things like that. Um, so we're going to do that. Um, but we're also going to add in this a new folder. I oh, know. Wait, hold on. We're gonna we're gonna save this first, and then in here we are gonna add a new folder, and we're gonna name this font. And you'll see why in a second. Um, so first thing we're gonna do is we are going to add a SOP 3D text. So a SOP again is a geometry, and we're gonna add this text. And we, the first things we're going to change is this horizontal line we're going to change to center and our vertical line to center. So our text is actually sitting in the origin of 00. zero. Um, and then in our font file, I happen to put a font uh, in our resources um, under in our Google Drive for week 11. And I have this little Star Wars font right here. And what I would do is I would take this font and I would go into my other folder that I just created and add that into the font. Um, so basically you can download a font and from DA font and then put it in there and cho choose whatever you font you want. Uh, because the fonts that we have here um, are somewhat boring and uh, they're based also on your computer. So the biggest thing is that we wanna have a font that you like and what you wanna do. So we have our font, <clears throat> and one of the things that you saw that I did in class is I made a table, and so this is the first time we're gonna do this too is we're gonna go into our DAT operator, and we are going to select table and in our table, we are going to uh, basically add some um, different rows so we can add some different files of text. And we are going to add a couple below. And basically, if you select on this portion of it, um, and if you add like one after, you can see, so this is how you build your table, like AKA Excel or Google Sheets. And then if you want to delete one, you do it like that, right? So basically, I'm going to put a couple different things in here. So let's say, hello world. And let's say Berkeley. So we have three different things. And um, I'm going to create a null after this. And I'm going to name this null. Three D words, <clears throat> and basically, if I take this and I need to basically parse this over to here to pick up this null, and how we've done this before is uh, we go in here. And we hit this button right here with this expression. And we type in OP. And we type in parentheses. And then we put in, for me, it's going to be 3D words. And then I am going to select um, 
zero dot zero. And you can see basically it picked the first word that I had in there. So I'm selecting the zero in the rows and the zero in the column. And that would be all great if we just had one word, but we're gonna do something else to change these words. So we are going to add an LFO, and this is just giving you, you know, some type of generative thing that's going to uh, position through and use this as a select. Um, and at the end of the LFO, we are going to add a count. And so every time the LFO is going into this count, it is basically going to count every time it hits a value of one. So first of all, I'm gonna change this LFO to something that's not gonna just fly through the words. So let's say 0.3. So it's gonna go up to one and uh, into negative one at a frequency of 0.3, right? So you can see that it's a little bit slower on the count. Um, and then we are going to, at the end of this, add a rename. In our rename, we're going to say word select. So we just know that something's happening in there, and it's so it is our word select. So we're just kind of organizing things as we do this. We're going to add a null at the end of this, right? Because it's what we like to do. And I'm going to name this null again, word select. <clears throat> and again, this is just for organization for me specifically. And um, so what's going to happen here is we are going to take this into our little um, table. And we want to select our table. So we already have this folder of tables. And we have our null that's going into our text. And we're going to add one more thing in between. So if we right click on the line, instant operator, and we are going to add a select. And in our select, we are going to do select rows again, because we want to go through these words in our select rows. We are going to go to index and we are going to drag this null or this value of this null after we hit the plus onto the start row index and we're gonna do chop reference. And you can see it says none, because there is no word, because we are on count number 50, and there's only basically three things in here. So a way to fix this is in our select, it's looking for the index row value of two, right? So it's only seeing that there's zero, one, and two, um, so again, it's three things, but zero being a number and touch designer. The, so we have to change something in our count. So our count is looking, um, just it's gonna keep going, right? So it's gonna keep going and going and going. So we gotta change this loop to loop min max. And when we do this, we are going to change um, the limit maximum and so what you do, this is another thing where we're going to kind of like reference some other things that are going on here. Um, so we go into our select and we find this value, which is it's a little Python here. And so what we're going to do is right click on this. And we're going to go to copy parameter. And in that copy parameter, we are going to go over to our count and we are going to then paste this parameter here or paste our reference, right? So now it's basically looking at um, these certain words that we have, and it's only going to go to that certain count, right? So it's only going to go um, to these different types of things. And right now it's saying, hello world, or it's saying world um, Berkeley. So we're going to change this number to negative one. And then you can see it is now picking up the zero. So it's saying, hello world, Berkeley. And the cool thing about this is that we reference this if we added another line in here and we said, we're gonna create one more row and 
we're going to say class. And you can see it added in there. So we didn't have to do anything. We didn't have to change anything because this count is basically referencing what's in this folder and what's in this select is operating based on that. So I kind of pointed this out in class. If you're making like a lyric video or if you're doing something else and you wanted these things to go through, this is kind of giving you a foolproof system to a certain extent of picking up some of that data. And again, the LFO, all we're doing is using the LFO as a something that is changing this count. And when we do that, you can use any kind of thing, MIDI, triggers, sensors, again, whatever we want. So this count is also um, doing something where it's, uh, it's it hit a, hit a 0.7 in there because we switched something in it. So I'm just gonna reset this so all my things align and my numbers align and they're even Steven. So again, it's kind of reset because the clock was caught in between uh, or the count was caught in between. So now it's just everything is clean. Okay, so we have our text and we have um, everything going on here, but we don't have it 3D yet. So in our text, what we can do is we can extrude our text. And once we extrude our text, you can see that our text is now 3D, right? And this is basically the extrude depth in the text. And we kind of did this in class too, where we added some other things um, and a good, again, add for something like this is an LFO and it's just gonna grow the text based on these values. And I'm gonna change this LFO to a ramp and I'm gonna offset this at 0.2 and change the amplitude to, let's say 1.3. And basically it's just going to start at 0.2 and then it's gonna go up to 1.3 or an amplitude after that, right? So we go in here, we take this value and I'm gonna create a null after here because in case we wanna do like an OSC value or something in the future, we already know this is kind of end of chain. Um, and one thing we, again we can do is we can add a rename in here and once we do the rename, we know that anything before this is always going to be renamed after here. So it will be, again, MIDI, anything else that's coming in here, we just know it's going to be clean. And we're going to change this name to Extrude. <clears throat> so everything is going to be called Extrude that's coming in here. So it's not going to break the chain down the road. And we're going to take this Extrude by hitting the plus button and take the Extrude value and drag it over Extrude Depth and do a chop reference. And now you can see that it is growing based on our LFO. So like I had up here, this is kind of moving fast. I'm gonna just change this down to like 0.3 um, and then it's gonna be a little bit of a slower growth. Um, so we, that's what we got right now. Some 3D text, you know, it's moving, it's pick, picking things up off the table. And we are going to then obviously do what we do and put this from the 3D world into the 2D world. And so a couple things we're gonna do here is we are going to first add, after this, a um, transform. And this will give us the ability to scale the text. We're going to add a texture. And this is gonna give us the ability to, when we texturize the text with some noise coming down the road, um, it's going to do that and give us some of those values. And then at the end of this, we are going to add a, of course, what we always love to add is a null. So our end of chain, All right? So here's our network so far. We're gonna right click on the end of the null and we are going to add a geometry. So now we're going in 3D space still, but we are in the world out of SOP into a geo. And anytime we add a geometry, we're gonna add a couple things. We are going to add a light which we are gonna use as a projector in the future. And we are going to add a camera. So we have our three items right here. And what I always like to do too is add a null because this is how we're gonna point our camera. And it just kind of gives us again that reference. And I'm gonna use this as camera position. 
And what we can do, of course, is we can bring up our little palette here by pressing C. And I'm just going to color this orange for no real reason, just because it's November. So we're going to take our camera and we're going to point our camera or look at our camera at the camera position, right? And so now we're looking at that. And in our camera, we are going to change, again, our translate and our Y axis to, let's say, two, because that's what I always use. And so that's going to kind of look up a little bit. It's going to position the camera into the space. Um, and you'll see once we add the render what it is doing. So in our render, we're going to add this in. And once we do, you can see that we are looking a little bit on top of this. And again, what I like to do is add another camera sometimes just to understand where we are in 3D space. And it's just a good idea to see like what's going on with everything. And you can see like, again, our camera, we positioned it up. We're looking in 3D space. We see our little hello world Berkeley class that we added and it's changing again in space, right? And so we'll just use this later on just to kind of see how things are playing out. Um, but this is all good. We got some text, we have it going out. If we did this, we could see it on the screen, um, but we really don't have anything else too much going on with that. But it is changing some stuff, which is a lot of fun. So um, we want to put this again into kind of like a little bit of a um, 3D space and then make some walls and a floor. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click or I'm going to double click again and I'm going to bring up a rectangle and um, within our geometry and um, so this is going to create our back wall and this is going to create our our floor so I have a rectangle and at the end of the rectangle I am going to add a transform and not a trail so I right click on here add transform <clears throat> I'm going to add a null at the end of this and then I'm going to right click on this and add another geometry. So you can see within our space right now our little rectangle that we just put is sitting in space but it's a rectangle size and this is where you just have to kind of play with numbers a little bit. And so we want to transform this rectangle a little bit back on the, on the Z axis. Because if you see in our little camera view down here, we want to push that down there. And, you know, kind of be beyond or behind uh, where the words are. So I'm going to say a negative one. And this is a good start. So it's behind the class. It's behind the hello world behind all that stuff and I'm going to transform this again I'm going to scale this to let's say two so we're making it wider and then two for height and um, so right now it's you know it's a little two by two but it's still not covering um, the hello the hello world part so we can again this is just playing with numbers so we scale this and let's say four so now we kind of have like a back wall that's a little bit bigger. And, um, but we don't have our floor yet. So what we need to do is basically add another geometry. And this is kind of the quick way to do this. There's many different ways, but I'm just gonna take all this right here and I am going to copy it and paste it. And so we basically have everything that we did but we are going to take our transform for this and we are going to rotate our X 90 degrees. <clears throat> and you can see in our camera view again here, now we have this plane that is going right into the hello and you can't see it as much because it's gray. But we are going to um, basically do this transform and we're going to position this down in the space. So we're going to take our Y and we're going to go to, let's say, negative one. And now you can see we kind of made a, we're sort of starting to like build a room here. And we're going to change our uh, Z axis to, let's say, zero. 
and there you go. So we created kind of like a little bit of a space, right? A little wall with the world and the hellos and the Berkeleys going into it and they're actually going through it. So um, that's again, that would just be going back into whatever you want to do in your LFO settings and maybe you don't want the amplitude to go that far and translate that much. So you could say, let's say 0.8 and it's not going to go like through the wall maybe. Um, okay, so we have this, we have all these things. Um, we have our Hello World and our Berkeley class. And one of the things you can see is if you start typing a couple more letters than this, um, it's really gonna start to go off the screen. So I'm just gonna go into my transform for here. And this is basically taking everything in front of it, um, which is basically our 3D uh, text. And I'm gonna transform this down to something like, let's say uh, 0.6. So it's making the font a little bit smaller. Um, and, um, you know, so that's kind of so we can get some bigger world words and different types of things in front of that. So one of the things, too, is like we already talked about how it's positioned in the space. Um, and it's sitting back still a little bit. So we could always, because of our camera angles and the rest of the things, say, like, you know, maybe we're looking too much, too much of a degree on that camera. We don't want to see as much of that. So that's the power of like this camera position um, and the null for our camera position, right? Because this is going at zero, zero axis. So we can basically go in here and say, instead of that, I want to do 1.5. So we're kind of just altering how we're looking at that. Um, and, you know, this is something that you play with and something that we did in the other videos too, where we are putting cameras on rails and things like that, okay? So this is great, we have some things going on, um, but let's create some texture onto our little words. And so what we're gonna do is, one of my favorites is we are going to add a top and we are going to add a noise. And um, like we did in the instancing video is we're gonna do some things to this noise um, to kind of change it but give some like some types of color patterns. And so I'm gonna change everything here basically to one. I'm gonna change the harmonics to 0.5, the exponent to one. Um, I'm gonna change my amplitude to 0.1 and I'm gonna change my offset to zero, right? So here's my noise. I'm gonna turn monochrome, um, off so it's going to be color change my seed value a little bit and i'm going to change my uh, resolution on this to let's say five by two <clears throat> and um that kind of gives us a little bit of um you know, things that we have going on in here. And I'm actually gonna change this. Uh, one, 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 point five, one. And why is my noise? Oh, see, now I have some color in there. But it seems like it's just not enough. So I'm gonna bring this amplitude back up to one and it kind of gives me a little bit of colors or something that I wanted, All right? So maybe I got a little, a little too picky on the numbers there right off the bat. So um, at the end of this, we're gonna change this. We're gonna add this into a, another null. We're gonna name this color. And um, what I did before in class was I changed the viewer smoothness to nearest pixel. So we kind of have like a little bit of a pixel and you don't have to do this, but this is something I'm just gonna do in there. And the common again, I am going to change this to um, nearest pixel again too. So I kind of know what I'm working with, right? And um, so one of the things we wanna do here is we have this and we wanna take this um, little noise that we created and we wanna put that into our text, right? So our text is up here and we're going to go to instance and turn instancing on. 
and then we're going to go to the second instance and we're going to pick our little color operator and we're going to drag what we just made in our color now over to here and um, then we're going to start to pick our values so our r g and b and now we have um our font that is changing based on those um, but we want this to kind of like rotate through some different things so what i'm going to do is i click transform in here and i'm going to type in abs times and you can see now it's kind of like rotating through some of these colors um, and this is again something to play with are we going into nearest pixel are we going to interpretate pixels um, so it's just different things that you want to do but this is kind of like a way that we are starting to create just a little bit of change here and you know just a little bit of something that's different and this is always where you can go into your noise settings and things like that and to start to change things around okay so um the other thing is the so now we have some kind of like text that's you know showing in space and it's changing within our camera because of our little um noise that we put in here um and this is all great and but you know it's just some white wall in the background and some uh, some you know gray wall on the floor so um in class uh, a couple weeks ago we created a little movie player um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add that um, and I put this in resources for the class and I kind of updated it a little bit and if you go back into uh, let's see we are week 11 here and you can see I added this image movie player talks and this is the benefit of having a tox is we can then just drag this right on to our touch designer file and all of a sudden we have this player that we built out and what i did in this i created some custom parameters here of our resolutions our file types um what kind of clock we want to use if we want to use seconds versus minutes and then also this folder where instead of going into this and you know going into the folder and picking different things is we can just select it right here from um, the little things that i made so i'm going to go in here and i'm going to go into my um, data for this session and this is where you would you know a folder again where you would create some image files and some movie files and things like that and i would put this in your create project folder so it has a reference to it right so um the way to kind of do something like that again is um if we go into let's say into our finder here in the mac and we open up two finders so we have two different things and we go into um our week seven, or I'm sorry, week 12, and we see our little tutorial this has these folders, right? And I'm gonna go into over here on the same thing into week 11, and I'm gonna take the images that I already made for this, and I am going to then just copy these over into our image folder, right? So now I have those images over here um, and I should have made a copy of this. Um, and so then again, I have this copy because I just kind of broke this file. But this is again is just like some file management things of how things are going, right? So you just kind of keep track of like where things are and how you organize your touch. And so when you deliver this to somebody else, they have the same types of things, right? So um, going back in here, we are going to then select and go into um, our file and this is my YouTube tutorial and if I go into my images you can see that now I drag that in there I have it and here is everything I have and I'm gonna select open right so these are the files and things that I created that I talked about in class and um, with my sloths and my ninjas and um, we want to basically put these on as a projector into this back screen so we're going to use the light as a projector here 
And um, so one of the things we're going to do is I, you know, I see that, um, you know, I put an output again inside this node. And so this output is going to be our movie file um, or our image file. And then our clock value is something that we can also use somewhere else in the um, in this. So it's some different things like that. Right. So at the end of this, I am going to add a, of course, the thing that I like to add all the time and everyone loves is a null. And I'm going to name this uh, projector image. And what we're going to do now is turn our light that we have right here into a projector. So if we go into our light and we go over to light and you see where it says projector map, we are going to drag this little null that we just made and drag this onto projector map. And now we are projecting into space and we are projecting on that back wall, right? And obviously the projector and the size isn't the same um, in what we're pushing out. So we want to then uh, change some of this. So if you go to projector angle, this is just like in projector land where you can sit there and change where the throw is in the space. Um, so this is something you have to play with a little bit in numbers. And I'm going to just, I think this 21 may be good. And so now it's projecting. And um, as you can see, we're going through the space, right? And we're projecting through and it's projecting onto this. And that is kind of creating what is happening. So there's also a thing here in shadows. And if we turn shadow to soft 2D mapped, you can start to see now we have shadows on the screen because this is what it would be like realistically in the world if you're projecting through 3D text in front of something you're projecting on. Um, and I just did soft 2D map and you can play around with some different, again, types of settings and things like this. Uh, change your resolution, you know, to get it a little bit crisper. And this is just something that you have to do and um, or something you can do, but you just have to be cautious a little bit on if your resolution goes too high, um, can your computer handle it, right? So right now, we have some cool things going on. And um, we have some different images that we're projecting through and we're looking at this and I already noticed like um, one of the things that I did before and why I made this little component a little bit different is it's cool to show images and things like that, but it's also if we, let's say, just did movies. So this is giving another example of you're actually displaying something in the background, right? Or thinking about a movie or using all kinds of things, um, using a webcam, you know, different types of things. So you can always just bring things like that in and or why I added these types of things too is we can have images and then when it rotates through it's going to pick up the movie um, we can change the speed from seconds to minutes you know so something's going to stay on there a little bit longer so these again are just parameters that you can mess around with and right now we'll let's say we'll just keep the movie on there and because it has a little bit of a vibe going on and um so the other thing that we see is um, what we really want to do is, and what we didn't get to in class that much, is add some other lights in the space. Um, and, uh, you know, how do we do that? So one of the biggest things that we can do is, again, is we're going to add a light and we're going to change these lights, you know, and change colors and things like that. Um, but I'm going to say, like, let's say, and as you can see, the light is showing, like, bam, right on the space, right? So it's just the light in the space. And I'm going to change this to, let's say, light left. And then I'm going to copy this light into another one. Um, and I'm going to name this light right. So we have like, the lights are actually obviously blowing out what we're doing in the projector. 
So this is where we have to like start to position the lights. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I am going to add another null. And um, within this null, um, this is going to be kind of like where we point our lights and where we are in space. So there's always kind of like a where do you find the null once it's in here? Because it does exist in here. And, um, but it's like how you have to move it in space. So one of the things that I always um, sometimes do, just like as a reference, and I'm gonna turn these lights off right now because they're just too bright. Oh, and they didn't wanna go off yet because they're still, they haven't switched. Uh, but okay, so what we're gonna do is we are going to, um, add another geometry in here and we're going to just basically just do a um a sphere and um this is just going to kind of give us a reference of like where we are going to position that now and this is like really only for reference purposes right so i'm going to add this geometry obviously that sphere is huge uh well aware and we're going to just going to change this radius down to like 0 0.1 0 0.1 0 0.1 and so this is going to be where we kind of like have um you know how we position our null for where our lights are going to look and so we're going to name this null again to light position and um in this sphere that we're using as a reference really we're going to take this sphere and we're going to do um the sphere is going to be constraint to um constrained to this null right so wherever we move this null um, this sphere is going to go so we go into here and we can start to position this in space and say okay we're going to move this down because i want it like i want my lights to kind of like look a little bit at the floor and then i'm going to let's say you know it depends on where i want to be in space but let's just start there and we're going to have that and we're going to basically take these lights right here and we're going to have them look at this little light position now. So we're going to move this up. We're going to take this light and we're going to do a look at this now. We're going to take this light and we're going to do a look at this now. <clears throat> so right now they're kind of looking down there and you know one of the things is the lights are a little obviously uh, bright. Um, and it's just different, like, what are they? So we're gonna first of all switch them to a cone light. And we're gonna switch again this one to a cone light. So now we have like lights that are in the space, they're not just like illuminating everything in there. And they're, you know, they're, so they're basically, again, looking at this. And as you can see in our 3D space, in our little reference camera here, um, our lights are both sitting way back here and they're just basically on top of each other. So um, what we want to do is we want to then position these lights a little bit. And uh, what I did in my example is I kind of just had them like pivoting through. So we are going to add another LFO because LFOs are always our friends in touch designer. On the end of the LFO, we are going to add a math, just in case we want to change some different things of that. And then we're going to add um, another no. And we're going to do this as um, basically like where our positional data is. And so, and it could be, this is where you, again, you could do some renames and different things like that. And you can get extensive within your networks. Um, but we will basically just test one first and, um, in our light left, we are going to change where it's going to be translating and on what axis it's going to be translating. So if I take, take this value right here and I position this over the translate, you can see that now the light is kind of like moving back and forth, right? So they're moving. So it's kind of, and this is where you'd play again with um, your math and you know how much movement you want to make. And I'm going to slow this down first of all because it is moving relatively quick. And just as I was thinking about this, let's let's actually add a rename here, and we're gonna we're gonna 
rename this to light position. Left. And then I'm going to take everything that we have here and copy this. Why does it feel like it's not copying this one? And I'm going to have two of these, right? And then we're going to name this. So this is the left one. And then we're going to name, uh, rename this one to position, light like position, right. We're going to drag this value over here um, into our transform. And uh, right here, we're going to put it on this. So this is one of them is going to be moving. And the other one obviously is broken right here because I renamed in the middle of doing it. And this is always the benefit of a rename. That's why I'm redoing this to so you don't break your signals again. So in here, we're going to name we're going to put this up here and we're going to name this. So now they're both going the same way. Right. So they're both two lights on top of each other, kind of slightly moving. Um, but it's really not exactly what I was looking for because I want to have them kind of like moving between the two of each other. So one of the things you can do is in our math, we can say our range instead of being zero to one is going to be like zero to two. So we're going to have a little bit more distance on it or, you know, what you have to just start like playing with numbers and seeing like what your desired outcome is. Um, so we'll go to zero to five. And in this math, we'll go to zero to five again. But now they're basically on top of each other again. So what we're in this math, what we're going to do in our operator, our pre-channel operator, we're going to switch to negative. So now, as you see these values, um, this one's coming in and it's and it's going through the LFO and one's positioning one way and one's going the opposite way. So they're kind of creating this like little effect um, of how the lights are changing. Right. And so they're doing this little strobe effect between the two of them. And, you know, that's a little bit of what I was looking for. Um, so one of the things, too, is it's great that we have some white lights. Like, that's awesome. And everybody just loves white lights. But um, let's add some color to those. So we can basically use a ramp. And we're going to make, like, this little color thing that's going to switch the color of our lights. Um, so if we go into our ramp in our little lighting node up here and we're going to add let's say some different colors so we're going to pick like three different things and in this as long as you like click on here you can add this and then if, if you just drag it up it takes it away so you can have like how many different colors you want and so i'm going to change this one i'm going to change this to let's say purple i'm going to change the white to let's say a blue I'm going to change the black to, let's say, a green. So we have this little effect of different types of things, right? And so these colors are basically, they're going to give you a value. And we'll see as we put these onto our lights um, how we can change the numbers. But it's really, again, how do we do that, right? So we have these values right here. And how do we put those ramp how do we put this ramp data on top of that? So in the ramp, we're going to take this ramp up right here. We're going to right click on it and we are going to go to chop and then we're going to go from a chop top two. And this is now giving us the values of our red, green, blue and alpha. And the cool thing about that is you can then basically go into your light and change these values you know accordingly to um, these values over here so what you do basically is you find the you, once you you press the plus on here you take the red you move it over and you can see our lights changing a little bit on one of them it's going over there and it is going over there right so our ramp is then now switch to this and so one of our lights is has this color in between these things um so it's going to like rotate through these eventually 
Um, but you know, this is a good point of um, let's take this and duplicate it. So we're going to have two of them. I don't know why my mouse is, is sticking. It's like stuck on the screen sometimes. Um, so we're going to have our top two. And if I wanted to, because obviously I didn't, rename these. And I could say colors. Let's say uh, light left. And you see it broke. And then we're going to name this light right and uh because i already named this is obviously doing a one and one versus because we already have two in here so if i go to my broken file right here and i hit plus it's going to see that it was looking for top two right so it's looking for those values because they broke and all i have to do in this um, there's two ways to do it i could do light and type this and you know right uh left one and it fixes it um, or I could just go back into this and then drag these values over here and do all my references but the benefit is now that I oops uh, that was not the right one if I change these values now that my like little SOP2 is named anything again that's coming into this <clears throat> should be really where I want it so I can put things in front of it um, and then I would just have to do some different things or I could put a null behind it um, and we'll go that way. So, so in here again, we're going to change this light and we're going to change these colors and we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to drag these over. Um, we're going to do that. And you saw in class, I used an example of a table, much like what we did down here. Um, And I put in values, number values, and I had the table or the lights actually going through the table um, and picking up values. So the, again, there's many ways to do this. Um, and but I just first start with this basic table, and we'll then we'll get into like light position tables and things like that. Um, but right now we have both these things, and the colors are actually just you know they're both the same color, so it's really not giving an effect that I want. So two things we can do. First, we're going to do a little ABS time dot seconds. And we're going to do this times, uh, let's say, 0 0.02. And so now our lights are slowly going through this little um, color change. And maybe that's a little too slow. So let's say 0.2. So you can see they're they're going to like switch colors as they kind of go through, and there's kind of like a hard line on that. Um, and so there's so what we could also do is like say we want this. I'm just going to copy this value and paste it over here. Um, so we have both of them, right? But now they're both like switching exactly at the same times, and much like we had our light position, how it was different. We want to change this. So the cool thing about any time you're doing an expression in here is if you just take this in the in the previous part and we hit minus in front of it, it's going to switch the position. So now the position's going the other way, right? So now our lights are somewhat changing as they pass by, um, but there is points where they're kind of hitting some of the same colors because our colors aren't that different, right? So it's then this is just like again where you play with different things here. And you play with like different aspects of colors um, and what color is, you know, is it a hard color? Cause we're kind of blending between like the blue and the green and the purple. So we could take this purple and we could make this, you know, more red on this, um, you know, or this section and you know, how much is it that it's going to be red? And if you double click in here and you add other values, you can basically go into this value and say, okay, or this red is going to be positioned for this amount. Um, and then this one, I'm going to have this be red too. So it starts to take like a different part of the value. Um, and, you know, so it's a little bit stronger, like within a section and how your periods are going and things like that. So you can see right here, it's staying a little bit more red in that section compared to that, right? Um, 
so this is kind of again so we kind of built a little bit basically what i did uh in my example for class um and this is really just where you have to go into some of these lights and you know change the parameters and say okay um maybe it's it's pushing too much or my cone is getting too big and i want it like a smaller a smaller angle on the light and this is why i did the the reference in the reading about you know um, different aspects and things like that. So you're kind of playing with it, but you just have to remember is you have two lights in here. So symmetry to me is important, you know, so then it's just looking in and saying, okay, where are these lights going and where are they in space? And there's multiple ways to do this. Um, you could, instead of always like changing both parameters in here, you could always create like a constant um, and then do this like, you know, cone, delta and then have these numbers like basically like position in here and i'm going to say let's say i want my cone this one to be five and i want this one to be two i'm basically then just going to take these values and drag them in here as my reference and then drag these in here to um as my reference so now I'm kind of just creating, again, something to where I can just come right into this little constant. And this is be, be start to be why you use like different um, things within colors and stuff like that. And you could say, I'm going to, you know, for the lights, let's say we're going to make all these yellow. And it's just so you kind of understand how different operators are being affected and what's affecting those operators. And it's giving you some some idea of like how things are, are moving. Um, and that's kind of what you got going, right? So we have some lights in the space and we have some other things. We have this little sphere down there and we don't need that anymore. That was just kind of a reference in our 3d space. Um, so if we just X that out, turn this off and you can see now we don't see the sphere, and we just see some kind of lights being in there in the space. And because we have our light position, um, and how it's sitting in space, we can, again, then just like position these lights you know, where they're going to be in space, um, different types of things like that. And, um, like how much we want them on the screen. And, you know, so this is just kind of that where we want them. Right. So hopefully that under, you know, kind of gives you a little bit of a taste of what I did in my example. Um, and then there's some other things that I also did too. And you can see down here how our lights are moving in space. Right. So the other thing is, um, one of the things that you can do is let's say we want this floor to be different and because right now this floor has like zero texture on it doesn't have anything so we could add um say a movie file in and we're just going to create like a little ad hoc texture we're going to do this and um we are going to onto this plane which is our geo that's really our floor. And this one is our wall. We're going to add a texture into here first. Right. And, um, man, I don't understand why this is snapping like that. Uh, okay, so in our little transform here, we, let's give this something, right? Because our wall is sitting down here. So we're going to add this banana down here. And we are going to basically um, put this banana into a constant and put that on the floor. So if we put the constant down, we drag the banana on top of the constant. So now the constant has that material. We drag this on top of the floor, put that on the material. Now our floor is a banana, right? And so that's super exciting because everybody loves bananas and I just love them so much. Uh, but I happen to create in my little folder here of my own images um, a, a little floor of stones. So now I have like some stones, right? And how super exciting is that? And um, this is where you'd kind of go in again and you can mess around with uh, how you want your 
texture spaced in there and how it's going to look um, and some different types of things, right? So thinking about spaces, also like uh, how big is the resolution on this? Um, you know, so some different types of things like that. You know, and how you change and how you just make some different aspects. So this is, again, you kind of so sometimes just play around with numbers and kind of see like what's happening. Um, also, like in this, like it is pretty bright, so I could take the alpha down on the stones, right? So now I've created like something and the stones happen to be really big again, but this is just um, without going into too much detail in this example, um, this is just another aspect, right? So I'm creating a texture on the floor and I have my lights like pushing on the back wall and things like that. Um, if I go back to my movie player up here, turn off the movie, do some images, you know, I have some different things like you saw in class. Um, and this, again, is just like kind of like a pre type of thing of kind of see like how space is, lights on space, you know, seeing shadows, um, using some basic, you know, components, um, understanding that I could go into my camera and position this around. And I'm going to have like a different viewpoint of the room um you know things like that um and that kind of just you know is, is kind of an example um the other cool thing is what you can do is you can take this section right here hold on let me put my do not disturb back on and um what i think is always cool is if you add a noise into something because uh, noises are always our friends and uh, noise exists in all the operators really so now we're taking the text and we're kind of like pushing the text around and uh so it's really like again thinking about that like what what is happening here uh what are the different values and you know how do we change those values you know and, and such and such right and let's say we don't want it to be amplitude that much right we don't want it to be like super crazy so we want some cool things like that um another cool thing that i like to do too is kind of give some definition to the this text right so we have the text going we have some different things but we don't have as much definition to it and um so what you could do is really think about like okay so how do how would i do that like how would i get some stronger lines on there um and one of the easy ways to do it is if you just take this geometry and you copy it and you paste it so we have another one here and well let's we're going to call this one like edge um and this is where you know i'm gonna reorganize everything because that's what i like to do um you're gonna think about okay so this is going on this floor i don't like that but uh, uh so anyways we're gonna just keep moving along but the so i'm gonna add my materials i'm gonna add another constant and i'm gonna drag this on top of the edge and so it's basically lighting again, an, a, a, an equal type of text. But in this constant, I'm gonna go to the common, I'm gonna turn wireframe and go to topology, or I'm gonna go to, um, you know, basically like GPU tested. And it's kind of given some more like little types of things. And because text has a lot of polygons, and that's what we've been talking about, um, it is going to show those polygons, but this is just a look that I, you know, it's kind of excited about for a second there. So, um, you know, just again, you play around with some settings. I want this to be, let's say, instead of white, I'm going to make it black, you know, or I'm going to make it red, you know, different types of things like red's always a good color. So we kind of have that's what's going on. Right. And um, basically, you know, this is giving you just some different things to change around and, um, you know, play with kind of that example. But uh, it's basically, um, you know, what the concept is. Um, so at the end of this change, and you can always see this because I, I created a different alpha. Um, and so it basically is telling my error, right? It's saying, yep, you got an error here because my alpha for this doesn't have blending mode enabled. And, um, you know, so that's just something that you have to look at and see, see like, 
um, what, what, how are you going to change some of this? But I would not worry about that at all. Um, it's not going to change anything. It's just going to say that how that alpha is sitting in the space. Okay. So, um, that's what I got. And, um, again, in anything that's in these chains, you can always add other parts to, let's say, switch this up, um, alter these things, you know, change how things are going, you know, turn the level up, uh, you know, make it brighter, you know, different things like that. So, um, many things to play with. And this was just an example of, again, creating different networks and different things with what we did. So, can see we made kind of a lot of stuff going on in this network and we borrowed from some other things and this is always the idea of just keep building and building and building to what you're doing okay uh everybody have a great week and that is it